Today, let's talk about three new interesting designs from Gibson and its dealers. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Let's go ahead and jump right into this, starting with a Music Zoo exclusive, Flying V Standard. This thing looks like another brand, but other than that, this is a very unique Flying V. So it's the 59 style, which is normally a Karina body, but this one utilizes a flame maple top, and it has one of my favorite custom shop finishes, Factory Burst. Now, you wouldn't normally find a Factory Bursted Karina Flying V, but you could find it on reissues starting in 2019-ish. But having specs borrowed from a 59 means you have the string through tailpiece, which is in a V format. You've got the two humbuckers, but where this thing starts to differentiate from normal is you don't have your output jack on a separate plate down here, it's up there. You have four control knobs on this, your toggle switch is right there, and the whole pick guard is missing. So we've kind of blent together a 58 with a 67 with maybe a little bit of Les Paul thrown in here. Pretty much the only spec change that I don't agree with is we've got a Nashville style bridge instead of an ABR1. But hey, notice this, you also have chrome hardware. But if that's all this guitar had, I would not be sharing it tonight. Because, my friends, I've tricked you! It's not a standard at all! Look at our full shot, it's technically a custom. Yeah, you've got your Gibson Custom logo up here, which you don't find on a Flying V too often. It's also a rare sight to see binding on the headstock of a Flying V. It's certainly an acquired taste, so it kind of works for the unique aspect of this one. But it looks like they spec'd it out with an ebony fretboard, and then just for some extra fanciness, they gave it dot abalone inlays. I feel like this guitar stands out enough and needed something just a little bit more, but generally Flying Vs don't get other inlays other than dots. But I think slap some Super 400s on here, still an abalone and give the headstock the abalone treatment too, then you would have a crazy statement piece. Because the flame maple top on this side is fantastic. Now in the stock photography, this side's not too good, but I'm betting in person it does the whole dancing thing and that's exactly what you want. But how is the back? Is it a maple body? Is it Karina? No, it's just straight up mahogany. That definitely keeps the price down while still being fun. But here's something fascinating. Look at our Gibson Custom logo right here. The aniline dyes have just completely ate it. <laughs> That's funny. So you almost don't even recognize it's there. And this one was produced in 2023. And we've got stock Grover tuners. Oh yeah, and in case you missed it, you've got binding on the top. So it's kind of like the blending of a standard and a custom and a whole bunch of other stuff. I like it, but I feel that we can make it even crazier. But as with anything that you make crazy with the Gibson Custom Shop, you get a price tag associated with it. $7,899. But that's still about $2,000 cheaper than your standard Carino one. So we've got room in the budget to make it fancy. But this is definitely not the first time Music Zoo's done something like this. Here's an example of an Explorer that they turned into a standard, and other dealers have also had these, but I just saw this one show up on Reverb this morning that is an old used listing from the Music Zoo for sale by another dealer. But this time it's basically just a regular Gibson Explorer, except for we have a flame maple top on it, center seam, once again, no pick guard to show off that wood grain. And because of that, you have to utilize a backplate for your toggle switch, because that's normally encased inside the front pick guard. But it looks like somebody moved the strap button to the base of the heel for some reason and then filled it in. That's kind of a shame. But this one was from 2014. And I didn't think the price was too bad on that, four and a half thousand. But now let's move on to topic number two. These are brand new reissues that I don't recall seeing before. It's possible that there's been other custom orders, but look what Dave's Guitar Shop listed this week. A 1970s Flying V reissue. We have the 70s Flying V, which we documented in this episode. It's about 2,500 bucks. It's a 70s influenced one. It's not a one for one replica. But when I saw this for 6,400, I was like, is that a vintage original? I mean, it's got the pickguard styling. It's got the layout. It's got the finish exactly how it is. It reminds me of my previously stolen silver burst that we talked about in this episode. But sure enough, you go to the far out photo. It's got the rounded overhead stock, although maybe not exactly the same. It is very close. You've got the correct three screw truss rod cover. And then you move on to the back. It's even got the volute and the continuation of the burst. And heck, they even threw Schaller tuners on it just for fun, even though most flying Vs of the era did not necessarily get those. The biggest question comes down to construction. Did they get the neck angle and pitch right? You can't really tell from this photo, but it looks like they did a pretty good job because you also get the ABR1 bridge. So if this was a Dave's custom order that they thought they could sell, fantastic job. If this is a sign of a new model to grace Gibson's lineup, I would be really excited for one of these because I love original 70s and 80s flying Vs. They're just fantastic. Maybe it's because I've never tried a true 67 or other super vintage ones, but to me, those things are 
magic. However, for this money, I mean, you could also buy a vintage original. Sometimes it might run you a little bit more depending on what kind of condition you're going for, or you might save a bit if you don't mind picking up a repaired example. But sometimes it's just like that Les Paul Deluxe we talked about in this episode. It was a 76 reissue. It's just fun to have something different. If you already have a bunch of real 70s ones, sometimes it's nice to compare it and see what it brings to the table. Because guitarists, we're funny guys. We get inspired by different guitars. That's why we own so many of them. And hey, a day after recording this episode, Dave's has another one of these. Now, this one has a little bit more of an exaggerated burst, which I could see a lot of people liking from a modern day aesthetic. So we'll have to see if more of these show up or not. And which one sells first, the darker, more vintage correct one or the more boisterous? Because I guess to be fair, paint jobs also varied in the 70s. And then running along the same lines as our last Flying V, we have a 2023 Les Paul Custom in this finish, Antique Natural. This thing is gorgeous. So this is, once again, Norlin era. The guitars that I really like within Gibson's history just because they're kind of oddballs. The natural finished ones of the era are so beautiful with the way they age. But this is one of the more recent examples that I've ever seen that Gibson actually used it. Now apparently this was a made to measure of five of these. And quickly going through these photos, it doesn't look like they were necessarily trying to do a 70s reissue, make it super period correct, or match the specs one for one. It's basically just taking that finish that has become so popular and offering it on a new thing, which is kind of what we just talked about. So a Norlin era one would generally be three pieces, but they've got the hue of the finish, right? Of one that's been slightly aged. It's got the Nashville style bridge, which in this case, I'm okay with. I had somebody ask me, why do you hate Nashville bridges so much? I don't hate them. It's historically, the ABR one is superior due to the way that it's mounted in theory. It just comes down to that's the way they did it in the 50s. That's the way Les Paul guys prefer it. There's nothing wrong with any bridge type, really. But interestingly enough, they use the 57 style knobs. But here's another reason I wanted to talk about this one. Usually when you get a translucent finish Les Paul Custom, they pair it with this crazily flamed top. But these ones, that's why it captured the 70s vibe. It's painfully plain. And I say that in a loving manner, because you're going to have a little bit of a Chateauian effect in some areas, like right over here. But sometimes it's nice just to have regular wood grain when you see so much flame and exotic tops out there. But as far as the back, it looks like just your regular mahogany with a mahogany neck, no volute. The headstock, definitely modern. They could have went as far as putting like the 70s style reissue logo. But anytime you mess with stuff like that, they just get even more expensive. So this particular one was offered by Dexter Music Center. It's possible more dealers got these as well, but they're asking 6,000. Which your standard Les Paul and Ebony runs you five grand, and the white finish at a premium of $57.99. So I guess having a natural finish, I mean, it makes sense when you compare it to the Alpine white. And the reason why white is so expensive is because it's really hard to spray that without it getting contaminated. That's why a couple of years ago, it took forever to get white guitars. So yeah, at the end of the day, it's kind of like what we talked about on the Flying V. You could just buy a vintage original, but sometimes it's nice to have something newer that still captures similar vibes. So I hope you enjoyed learning about those three new models I saw pop up on Reverb, but our fun is not over yet. Because check out this weird thing. Fuller's Guitar posted this. It's a 57 reissue Les Paul Custom in what appears to be a sweet TV white finish. I've definitely seen this before, but it's always cool to see him again because you get the wrap tail, still humbuckers, everything else is pretty much normal except for the finish and our wrap tail. But I always love it when people play with the finish on 57 reissue customs because they're all mahogany guitars. A lot of guys don't realize that, so that means instead of a maple top, you have the mahogany top. So when you have a beautiful finish like this one, it accentuates that and lets you see the cool wood grain that you don't normally happen upon. So it's kind of like taking a special, but upgrading it to a custom and then giving it a carved top and some fancy binding. And instead of TV yellow, you give it TV white. Get all that beautiful wood grain on the back as well as on the neck. And yeah, love those Cluson waffle back tuners. They're so cool. But if you're interested in adding that one to your collection, it's 7800 Here's a fun used one I ran across. It's a 1993 Les Paul Classic in a quilt top. Now, it's advertised as a, a custom shop over here, but it's actually one of those pre-custom shop ones. It just has the custom shop edition decal, which means it was a limited edition of some sort. That is a fantastic top for one of these Les Paul Classics. 1993 is a pretty good year for those as well. It's got the ABR1 bridge. I would not fault you if you visited that affiliate link in the description, clicked on it, and then purchased this guitar. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you ever want to support the show on any reverb purchase, clicking my links does give me a small kickback. You can also do the same for my Sweetwater links. Now, as far as the back of this one, it's nothing too fancy, but it actually appears to be in pretty good shape, all things considered, because a artist actually used this to record an album if you go through and read their description. Looks like we got Dunlop strap locks on it yet, but everything else, not too bad for a cool custom shop edition guitar that appears to be all original. 
which to be honest, I don't think he's that far off. Like even as a dealer, I would pay 2,500 because I think between 3,000 to 3,800 is definitely fair game. Go ahead and snap it up if you'd like before I do. And to finally round out the rest of tonight's episode, let's just check out some of the more unique music zoo offerings. We talked about that cool Flame Maple Top Explorer being a standard, and we talked about 57 reissue Les Pauls having mahogany tops. Here's kind of like a, a blending of that for a lot less, although I do believe this one is technically used. Because we actually had an episode dedicated to this one before, but it got traded back in. So it's just a bound explorer, but you've got the red aniline dyes, so you can see all the beautiful wood grain, and then they've blacked out everything and given you these standard inlays. I thought this was a very sweet offering. I'm kind of surprised it sat around as long as it did. But hey, it seems like this one has that same aniline dye bleeding into the Gibson Custom logo. But we've talked about all the Les Paul Seniors. You can check them out in this episode. They've still got a few of them. I'm sure if you call them up, they might give you a deal. I was shocked to see one of these Tony Iommi's in stock. Now, this is not a brand new guitar. This is a, I wouldn't necessarily call it vintage yet, but it is an older collectible and these things are getting hard to find. I would like to document in the future if the right ones come up at the right price. Now, this one's cool for the mirror cross inlays and his signature pickups. They also had what looks like a... Sergio Valen signature, but rebranded so it could be cheaper, maybe? Those things did not sell too well for Gibson, but sometimes that's the story that attracts people in the future. Yeah, that weird P90 humbucker guitar. I've got one of the originals. And they had this Les Paul special with three humbuckers in that cool TV white finish again. And then lastly, do you need a rap tail with triple P90s? I think you might. But wow, that's not a bad price when you look at all the other custom shop stuff. It's technically labeled as new, too. But that's just because 54 reissues just are not as expensive as the 58s or 59s. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.